This episode was sponsored by Morning Brew. Start your day by catching up on business, finance and tech in just five minutes. The link is down below. Last time I was at Oxford University, I sat the entrance exam to study undergrad mathematics at St Edmund Hall, Oxford University, and scored horrendously. However, with some help from Dr Tom Crawford, we managed to swap my score up from 37% to 61% in two days of studying, which would hopefully just be high enough to bag me an interview. Well, now it's time to see if I would actually be accepted by the university. I'm going to be interviewed by two colleagues of Tom's who actually conduct the interviews at St Edmund Hall, and they're going to tell me what they think. However, the first thing that we're going to do is do a mock interview with Tom, just to gauge where I'm at and to see what's involved. I'll tell you how I feel about this. So I have an air of confidence about this one because I'm quite good at interviews. I, I'm only going on job interviews. Yeah. I think I'm going to be okay. So should we just fire straight into like a, a mock interview now? See how we get on? Let's do it. Cool. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Uh, I am Dr. Tom Crawford and I'll be conducting your interview today. So do you have any questions about the, the setup? Because I'm just about to dive in with some maths. So are you um, no. happy at this point? Can I ask you if I'm stuck or is it just... Just no, that's absolutely fine. If, if you get stuck, I'm more than happy to, to offer hints and stuff. Yeah, right, we're going to cool. be going through these problems together. So. And what we want to do is to create a cylindrical tin. And we want to make our tin have the smallest surface area possible. So I'm like, do I want something really tall and thin? Or do I want something really short and fat? Are two possible things which could have the same volume. We want to work out what is the ideal size of our cylinder containing our cat food to minimize the surface area. Immediately, I knew I was in trouble. There was no asking, why are you applying for this role? Tell me your weaknesses or what are your hobbies outside of work? None of that pointless crap that they usually ask you in job interviews because this wasn't a job interview. Tom just got down to it straight away and it became apparent quickly, they didn't care what I looked like, what I was wearing, what I did at the weekends. The only thing Tom cares about here is, am I a good mathematician? Which is both terrifying and comforting in a way. We'll need at least at the very minimum to have an equation for the surface area of the tin. How, does, how do I do good, get that? The answer is that the, the, the height, it should basically be like a square. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yep. Um, R cubed is equal to. Performance or is it good or bad? I mean, you can tell you haven't done maths for a while. <laughs> <laughs> How come I can get five with four but only three with three? <laughs> that makes no sense. Okay, for all the maths nerds out there, here's one of the questions Tom asked me. If you make n cuts in a pizza, what is the maximum number of pieces you can get? For just one cut, it's clearly just two pieces. But for two cuts, you could get four pieces. For three cuts, you can get as many as seven pieces. You need to find a general formula for the number of cuts, n, that gives the maximum number of pieces. And if it makes you feel any better, Tom had to hold my hand all the way through this one. So how did I get on? What do you think? How did it go? It's like... I thought it went pretty well. <laughs> like if I if I walked out there, I would have been like, yeah, uh, start looking for accommodation. I think you did, Tom. Um, <laughs> it's very obvious that Mike hasn't done any maths for a while. I would say is is the main takeaway I got from that. So I think overall, you know, it was kind of distinctly average, I would say, in terms of the total performance. So I, I genuinely can't say if Mike would get in off the back of that performance, but I think what we can say is I would be looking for a very strong test score if that was the interview performance. I think it's just a little bit below the borderline. So if we're saying the borderline is a six or seven, I think that's probably like a five. All right, not great. The question is, can you improve at technical interviews like this? Is this a skill you can actually learn? Can I improve in just two days? Tom has a plan. We've got some work to do, right? 
before my real interview. I, I think so. Okay. It's not all bad news, but yes, <laughs> we we are going to have to. I'm going to have to work you hard. I think. I've broken it down into four four step plan to yep. help you pass this interview. So I think the absolute basics are going to be to brush up your math skills. Right, it's quite clear you haven't done maths for a while. We can start with the syllabus. Everything you're expected to know for the admissions test, you're definitely going to need to know for the interview. So we can just work through that, like tick, tick, tick. Yep. Get you fluent with maths again. That makes sense. We're going to look at logical thinking. Yep. So what I mean here is, given a certain statement, can you interpret it correctly? We're then going to go on to, I guess, general tips for getting stuck. So I'm the interview again is designed for you to get stuck. We want to know how you overcome those struggles. So obviously working on general techniques of once I'm stuck, what do I do? And then the last thing is something that I tend to use a lot in, in the interviews I do um, is about looking at how you absorb new knowledge. So I'm going to teach you something very quickly that you've never seen before and I do not in any way expect you to know. I want you to absorb it quickly and then immediately be able to use it. And these are things that people can actually work on. Absolutely, yeah. It's sort of, these are what I would say are like general tips and techniques of being a good mathematician. Yeah. So first things first, we have to brush up on the syllabus. You have to know the basics. This information is published and easy to find online. So at a minimum, you should know all of this stuff. As a note, this is all high school level stuff. So for me, it's more of a case of dusting off the old cobwebs rather than learning it for the first time. Okay, so this is the syllabus that's published online. Um, at a minimum, I should know all this stuff. Yes. for AC over. So, for the entirety of the first day, we just brushed up on my high school mathematics for the third time. Plus 16x. Get your answer by sitting back in. Yeah. That's something that we'll do a lot of. Okay, it is day two. Uh, we're just going to do more. More of the same. <laughs> so we're going to work our way through this question and I think this will help to train you or give you an idea about possible ways out of what feels like a dead end. So you're, you're telling me that it's impossible to know everything so you'll never get stuck, but there's ways to learn how to deal with being stuck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There are techniques you can use. It's not foolproof. But the more examples we look at, the more you'll realize, oh, there was a way out doing this, cool. or let's try and think about it in this context. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Tom's plan was to improve three aspects of my math skills, logical thinking, getting unstuck, and using new information. The way he went about doing this was simple. It was a case of doing challenging problems that stressed my math skills over and over. Tom would push me with questions that deliberately got me stuck, where the only way out was through logical reasoning or using the tidbits of information provided. It's surprisingly similar to training physically, where you train outside your comfort zone in order to improve. This is a grueling process that saps at your energy. And really, I could have used a few extra days of this. Okay. Mm. I, know, I, know, I know your brain's fried, but look at, I think- Look I, at all this. <laughs> Look at all this. Yeah. This is what we've done yeah. just today. Just like pages and pages and pages of work. <laughs> okay. Yes, my brain is fried. All right. You know, you've got this. I have every, genuinely have every faith in you for this. Uh, okay. Right. We're out of time for practicing. Tomorrow's the interview. Yep. Uh, are you feeling like a confident teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just hope you don't stumble on the rustiness that we... Yeah. We've tried our best to clear that up. I think there are certain types of questions I can see you flying through, and there are <laughs> others where that rustiness might... Yeah. Even though it won't necessarily affect the interviewer's opinion of you, I think it, you might allow it to throw you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dreading tomorrow. Genuinely dreading it. And it doesn't even mean anything to me. Like... I'm not going to Oxford, <laughs> especially not after tomorrow. <laughs> it was time. Let's meet the interviewers. Cool. So, um, I'm Adele. I'm, I'm about halfway through a PhD at Oxford um, and I teach some of the first year classes. Um, and I've, um, I've interviewed for the admissions interviews uh, two years previously. 
I'm Oliver. I'm a maths tutor here at Teddy Hall, um, where I've been for a number of years, and a professor in the maths department at Oxford. And so I'm the senior maths tutor at Teddy Hall, just I've been here the longest, and I'm the one who organises our admissions interviews. Um. Small tangent here. You get it? Tangent? Oliver is quite an interesting chap. Some of you might remember the Eternity puzzle from 1999, a tiling puzzle that offered the first to solve it £1 million in prize money. Well, Oliver and his friend Alex Selby did it. They figured out how to generate a solution and wrote a programme to find it. And they got the million pounds from a puzzle. Oliver has a talk on how he did this. It's a fascinating watch and it's linked down below. Right, on with the interview. Know this isn't a real interview and I know that I this doesn't matter to me but I'm <laughs> my pants Hiya. Oh, perfect thank you <laughs> I'm so nervous thank you hi Oliver I'm Mike I'm I'm Mike. <laughs> nice to meet you but we're just basically going to ask maths questions and that's it so yeah. is it okay if we just jump right. in with the first question yeah so suppose I have a function f and it satisfies the following equation, that for every x, f of x plus twice f of one over one minus x is equal to x. What is the value of f of three? I'm just gonna write this out again, just to try uh -huh. and wrap my head around it. Plus. That's a good idea. Two. Okay, these questions were brutal. I know that hindsight is 2020. However, I do understand these questions and I know I can do this. But honestly, the pressure just got to me. My mind was cloudy and I felt scared to write something down, fearing it would be laughably wrong. Adele and Oliver had to help me through this more than I would have liked, and I was kicking myself afterwards for losing my cool. If I could evaluate f at minus a half, mm -hmm. then I could sort of substitute that in. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Yep, yep, that's correct. That's it. I'm not actually sure if the number is right or some number oh, went wrong or somewhere, but yeah, yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, well done. Okay. <laughs> well, um, Adele's turn. Now, right. now, now for something completely different. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, which factorisation of 840? gives us the largest sum. What about, what are all the things? Uh, uh, say, say, can you say that again, sorry? Um, your, what you just said is that the question is, um, do we get a, a larger contribution by by splitting this number, by sp like splitting this up, mm -hmm. or by taking it? They would give 420. Uh, and it, they give just this bit, right? Sorry, yeah, they would give. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you write down like an algebraic equation? Yeah. That you might be interested in. So is it like saying A mm -hmm. times B? You might find it helpful um, like to write down maybe an inequality that you want to prove. Great. So you've shown the statement here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I think, well, I think that's I think everything we're... from me. Yeah. Are we well, done? Thank you. Got them in the end of that one. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, okay. Great. So how did I do? Did I get in? It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you it can be honest, he's not here. It was a bit rusty on some things, but mm. so on, on my question, I like that he sort of actually had ideas, so he thought of trying to find a point where you get these two things the same, so you get an equation in terms of itself. Maybe the weakest thing was just sort of like keeping track of the, pic the big mm. picture that we've oh, got I down into all these yeah. little details, and then it was, yeah. uh, why are we doing this and where, where are we trying to go, which is... Yeah. Um, yeah, because I guess it did feel like in this that, I mean, I was sort of gut, like giving a lot of hints yeah, about like needed, where, where we're going to take this of, proof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, I mean, that, I mean, that's fine, but often you want them to be able to like take those ideas and absorb them and sort of really understand what's going on. So that's sort of why I was asking towards mm -hmm. the end, what are we trying to prove here mm -hmm. to sort of check mm -hmm. how much that, how, how, how much he was just sort of doing what I seem to be suggesting and how much he was sort of comprehending what yeah. was going on. Uh, so I maybe think, not so great. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's borderline, as uh, I would say. Yeah. If this came out, it's borderline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Borderline. 
so you're saying there's a chance. To be honest, I'll take that. Despite my performance not being great, it did actually improve from my mock interview. So this is a skill you can work on. You can obviously learn the syllabus, but you can also learn how to get unstuck, how to use the information the interviewers give to you, how to think logically on the spot. It's just a case of practice, just like everything else. This episode was sponsored by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that brings you up to speed with business, finance, and tech, and it's designed to be read in just five minutes. It prevents me doing that horrendous, endless Twitter scroll in the morning that leaves me feeling enraged and deflated and instead gets me informed quickly. For example, today, I skimmed through the markets, which are going nuts, the tech news, and learned that the US Senate has passed the Sunshine Protection Act, which aims to make daylight saving time permanent, but that's unlikely that the bill will pass the House. Morning Brew arrives as an email in your inbox each morning. It's very condensed and written very well, and it's designed to get to the point quickly, but without glossing over the important details. If you're tired of the dry, bland manner in which traditional outlets cover the news, this is perfect as it's written in a really witty style. But best of all, it's 100% free. And there's no installation, it's not an app. It works in your browser or in your email app. And it takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. I actually timed this. You have to click quickly, but it's actually possible to do it in 15 seconds. So have a more productive, informative, and focused start to your day with Morning Brew. The link is down below. It's free, try it out. Thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this episode, and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.